Lesson 80. In the last lesson, we learned about indirect objects. We took a few moments to look at how indirect objects are used in English and a couple of different ways to express them. Now that we have a handle on indirect objects in English, we're going to look at how to do them in Latin in this lesson. So far, we've learned four out of the five cases in Latin, and in this lesson, we're going to learn about the last of the five. As you can see by looking at the chart, the third case is called the dative case, and that's the case that we're going to use to express indirect objects in Latin. If you take a look at the dative singular form of nauti, the one that is circled in the chart, you'll see that it looks just like the genitive singular or the nominative plural. The nominative plural, the genitive singular, and the dative singular all have the same ending, and that is A-E. But don't let that confuse you because the context of the sentence and the order that the words are in will help us to translate, even though some of these forms share the same ending. There's an example sentence here. Let's take a look at that example sentence and get some practice working with the indirect object. In this sentence, watch out for a word that's in the dative singular. Our example sentence is agricolae fabulam naro. Naro is the verb, and that means I tell or I am telling. Fabulam is the direct object, and that means story. And agricolae is in the dative case, and that's the indirect object. So we'll translate this sentence as I am telling a story to the farmer. So since agricolae is dative, we're going to translate that as to the farmer or perhaps for the farmer. So when you see the dative case, just think of it the same way as you would an indirect object in English. And keep in mind that in this book, the indirect object will come before the direct object in the sentence. So if you look for that word order, it will help you greatly when you translate these exercises. And really, the best way to get accustomed to this is to practice. So that's why I've put in lots of practice exercises at the end of each lesson. So let's jump right into our exercises and get some practice with the indirect object. In exercise number one, naro is the verb. That means I tell or I am telling. And fabulam is the direct object. Nautai is in the dative case, and that is the indirect object. So number one will say, I am telling a story to the sailor. In number two, narat is the verb. That means he, she, or it is telling. But we don't need he, she, or it because poeta is the subject. Fabulam is the direct object. And agricolae is the indirect object. It's in the dative case. So number two will read like this. The poet is telling a story to the farmer. There's one other thing that I'd like to tell you about number two. I'd like to direct your attention to the first two words of the sentence. Notice how the first word of the sentence, poeta, is in the nominative case, and the second word ends in ae. Now, as I've previously mentioned, there are three forms of the word agricola that end in ae. That's the nominative plural, the genitive singular, and the dative singular. So I'd like to briefly address what might happen if you thought that agricolae was nominative or genitive. If you thought that agricolae was nominative, then you might translate the first two words as the poet and then farmers, and that wouldn't really make much sense. If you thought that agricolae was genitive singular, you might translate the first two words as the poet of the farmer or the farmer's poet, and that doesn't really make much sense either. So there are a total of three different choices for the word agricolae. It could be nominative plural, genitive singular, or dative singular. How do we arrive at the correct answer? How do we know what agricolae is? Well, the answer to the question is that we look at the context of the sentence. The sentence is talking about telling a story, and in that context, having an indirect object makes perfect sense. Also, we can rule out the nominative plural and rule out the genitive singular because they don't really make much sense. A third clue is that the word agricolae comes before the direct object which indirect objects tend to do. So looking at the context of the sentence, ruling out other possibilities, and looking at the word order are all three methods that we can use to figure out what case agricolae is in.
and how it fits in with the rest of the sentence. Let's move on now to number three. In number three, narrant is the verb. That means they tell or they are telling. But we don't need the word they because puellae is the subject. Fabulas is the direct object. Notice how that's plural. And poetai is our indirect object. That's in the dative case. So number three will say, the girls are telling stories to the poet. And just like last time, the word poetai could be nominative plural, genitive singular, or dative singular. If it were nominative and the sentence said, the girls, the poets, that wouldn't make much sense. Or if it said, the girls of the poet, or the poet's girls, that wouldn't make much sense in the context of the sentence either. But the girls telling a story to the poet, that makes sense. And also, the indirect object here is coming before the direct object. So looking at all those clues, we can tell that poetai is an indirect object, and it's dative. In number four, est is the verb. That means he, she, or it is. But we don't need the he, she, or it because skafa is the subject. Skafa is being possessed by nautai, which is in the genitive singular. In aqua is a prepositional phrase that means in the water. So number four will say, the boat of the sailor is in the water, or the sailor's boat is in the water. So number four is sort of a trick question that I put in there to see if you're paying attention. In the previous two exercises, numbers two and three, I had an indirect object. But in this one, now tie ends in AE, but it's not an indirect object, it's a genitive singular. So if you saw the AE ending, and just assumed that it was an indirect object, then I may have fooled you. Instead, it's a genitive possessing skafa. Remember always to think about the context of the sentence, rule out things that don't make any sense, and look at the word order. And if you do those things, they'll help you translating the Latin sentences. In number five, natant is the verb. That means they swim or they are swimming. But we don't need they because incoli is the subject. Incoli is being possessed by insularum. Insularum is genitive plural. In aqua is a prepositional phrase. And saipe is an adverb. So number five will say, The inhabitants of the islands often swim in the water. In number six, est is the verb. It's being negated by non. Scola is the subject. Puellarum is a genitive plural that's possessing scola, and insilwa is a prepositional phrase. So number six will say, the school of the girls is not in the forest, or the girls' school is not in the forest. In number seven, the word said is here, and that's dividing the sentence into two independent clauses. The first one says, you are a farmer, and the second one says, I am a poet. So number seven says, you are a farmer, but I am a poet. In number eight, est is the verb. That means he, she, or it is. But we don't need the he, she, or it because familia is the subject. Agricoli is a genitive singular that's possessing familia. In casa is a prepositional phrase. So number eight will say, the family of the farmer is in the house, or the farmer's family is in the house. Remember that when you look at the word agricoli, you have to decide if it's nominative plural, genitive singular, or dative singular. We look at the context of the sentence, we rule out things that don't make sense, and we think about the word order. In number nine, the word said divides the sentence into two independent clauses. Patriam amo means I love the homeland, and ad insulam nawigo means, I am sailing to the island. So number nine will say, I love the homeland, but I am sailing to the island. In number 10, we have the word said again, dividing the sentence into two independent clauses. In the first clause, sumus is the verb, that means we are, and incoli is the predicate. Silwai is a genitive singular that's possessing incoli. So the first clause will say, we are inhabitants of the forest. The second clause, octam amamus, says, we love the seashore. So number 10 as a whole will say, we are inhabitants of the forest, but 
we love the seashore. 